Today we're going to learn about preparing your site for planting, an essential step in any revegetation project. This is my favourite time of the year because I get to plant trees. But remember, there's lots of things that can unravel your best intentions. So let's look at the important steps you need to follow to make sure these guys flourish. My favourite guiding principle with planting is you put the right plant in the right place for the right reasons. So that means you think about why you're doing the planting. And here I've gone for locally endemic plants. Now that means plants that would have naturally grown here and of course they're going to have the best impact in terms of bringing back that wildlife. Then I think about the site itself. So I've got lots of trees all around me, so I don't need too many more trees. So I'm going to go with an understory. And in this case, I'm going with a beautiful Corozema. All right, I've chosen my site and I'm lucky that this is actually quite deep. And remember, you want the soil to be nice and deep so those roots can get established. So some areas of the hills, that's going to be fine. And of course, the foothills, you're going to find mostly it's nice and sandy. But if you're up in the hills and there's lots of rock, don't give up. <laughs> you can use a mattock or you can use an amazing machine like I have over here to really break up that soil to get those plants established. And the next thing to remember are the weeds. Now the weeds are always gonna be the enemy of your plants. They're gonna try and smother and outcompete your best efforts. So I've been fortunate. I've chosen an area here where there aren't a lot of weeds and you can see there's just a few here, but some areas you're gonna get lots of weeds and you may need to scalp them or spray them. Whatever the case, you wanna keep an area at least 30 by 30 free of weeds so your plants have got a chance to grow well. All right, now it's time to think about the soil, the place where your plant's gonna spend the rest of its life. So let's go and have a look up close. So you can see this is actually really dry and we've had 100 mils of rain, so that tells me this soil is water repellent. So I'm gonna put a wetting agent on. Now the wetting agent is gonna break down the wax, which is what's actually stopping the water getting in in the first place. So I put that on, put on some water. And that wetting agent is going to make sure the water now gets into the soil, which is gonna help your plants grow because they need moist soil. All right, so as I said, I've gotta remove all these weeds about 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters to give the plant a great chance to establish without the threat of weeds smothering. We've done the scalping, we got rid of the weeds, we get to the exciting bit now, and we're gonna start putting our plants in. Okay, so I've chosen this Corozema, as I said, and this is called tube stock. Now the advantage of this is, you can see the root system is, is in really good, strong condition. It's not coiled or root bound, so when it goes in the ground, it's gonna grow quickly, and it's actually gonna catch up with our bigger plants really quickly. So let's get it in the ground. When you're preparing the soil to dig a hole at least four to five times the size of this root ball, and that's gonna mean you've got nice, soft, friable soil so the roots can get out, the plant can establish. So we're gonna put her in the ground, get it nice and deep. Wanna make sure when the plant goes in the ground that none of that root ball is showing. We push the air pockets out. We make sure we get rid of all those air pockets and then very importantly, we have to protect the soil and garner as much water towards the plant as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bank. You can see I'm building it here. And this is gonna mean any thunderstorm, any rain event, winter or spring or summer, it's gonna come collect and go down into the soil there. But we're not finished. Now I'm gonna put some mulch. Now I could use street tree pruning, which is a fabulous mulch, but in this instance, I'm gonna use rocks. Now the beauty of using the rocks threefold. Firstly, it's going to protect that soil, stopping erosion, but it's also going to keep the water in the soil in summer, so it, it's going to help protect this plant and its habitat. Someone once said that, um, think from an animal's perspective, we want this to be an instant habitat, and these rocks are going to be great for lizards, skinks, and small insects. And we give the plant a really good drink, to get it established in its new home. So I plant in the ground. Now this poor thing can't run away from rabbits or kangaroos, so we need to give it some protection for at least the next six to 12 months. All right, we got 
a tree stake. Put that in the ground and we put the plant in the sleeve. That guy's in the ground and we've done everything we can to give it a good start. So with the rest of your planting, think about design. Group some plants together, leave some spaces and remember your planting site shouldn't be a blank canvas. So add in logs and rocks. You want this to be an instant habitat. Okay, I'm off to plant the rest of these. And remember the best time of year for planting is the beginning of winter. If you want to find out more about preparing your site for planting, contact the City of Kalamunda. They'll be happy to help.